Welcome to this online lesson looking at the fight against infectious disease. This will be in two parts. The first part is everything you need to know about cock. And stop laughing at the back. That is actually his name and that's how it's pronounced, so I'm going to stick with it. Germany, germs and vaccines. Our aims in this lesson? Well, firstly, to stop laughing at his name, that's quite enough. To describe the work of Koch, Ehrlich, Hatter and Domag, we're going to find out who they are. And to assess the relative importance of these individuals. Here's a do now task. What is the difference between forming a theory and proving it? And secondly, which is more important? Pause the video here and answer that question. So, one can form a theory, but that doesn't mean an awful lot unless you can scientifically prove it. You can very well say just about anything, but it's the proof which means it's actually useful. So what is more important? I would certainly argue the proving it. That said though, if you don't have the theory in the first place, or if you borrow the theory off somebody else, perhaps that gives you the leg up and the starting point you need to make an even bigger breakthrough. And perhaps as well, that could be said for the work of Robert Koch. So it's not just all about Pasteur, and I do have another lesson off pa on Pasteur if you're not familiar with his work. This is everything you need to know about Koch. Robert Koch was a German scientist. He used Pasteur's work and proved Pasteur's theories. He also created new vaccines for tuberculosis and cholera. He identified that specific germs cause specific diseases. So this is very much the basics and we're going to look into more detail as to how important this was. But to begin with, summarise Koch's basic achievements in a short paragraph. Then secondly, which achievement do you think was most important? Explain your choice. Pause the video now. Let's have a look in more detail, then hopefully you'll be able to improve your answers if you need to. Let's have a look at the factors for change that helped Koch in his medical discoveries. The first factor is war. Now this might not seem an obvious one, but actually it led to a significant amount of national rivalry. The Franco-Prussian War, which is uh, France versus Prussia, which is now part of Germany, was between 1870 and 71. It turned Pasteur and Koch into rivals. Each wanted to better the other's achievements and show that their country was best. Pasteur was French, Koch was German. Then technology. Koch had a well-equipped laboratory, like Pasteur. He also used photography to record bacteria and grew bacteria on petri dishes and potatoes. You can see an example of an early microscope photograph to the right. He used dyes to identify bacteria, for example tuberculosis, and he used microscopes and photography as well. Individual genius. Robert Koch used his talents as a scientist to test his ideas. He was first to prove an individual bacterium caused disease. This was anthrax. And he developed a cure for tuberculosis, although sadly it didn't work. Let's have a look then. Explain how each factor helped Koch make progress. This might just involve noting down what he did, but to explain it properly you'll have to take it further and explain why that particular breakthrough is important in medical history. Secondly, which factor is most important in helping Koch make progress? Explain your choice. Pause the video now. So which did you choose? War might have turned Pasteur and Koch into rivals, but it probably didn't do much more than make them work a little bit harder. It's unlikely that Koch would have been able to make his breakthroughs without all of this new technology. But equally, would that technology have been particularly useful without Koch's genius? The likelihood is you've chosen one of those two. Let's do some exam skills to understand this further. This is a cartoon that was produced during Robert Koch's lifetime to show him fighting in diseases like tuberculosis. You can see on the snake it is labelled tuberculosis bacilla, which basically means the tuberculosis germ. Robert Koch is shown riding a horse as if he's going into battle, and his saddle is labelled Dr Koch and Investigation. Speaking of investigation, in his hand, raised aloft as if he's going to use it to strike down the serpent, is a microscope, and it is indeed labelled microscope. Study Source A. How would you follow up Source A to find out more about the importance of Koch in the development of vaccines? In your answer you must give the question that you would ask, the type of source that you would use. Complete the table on the following slide. Alright, here's the source again, and here's the table that you would see in the exam to fill in. Pause the video here, note down those headings, and complete the question. 
Ordinarily, the table would be created for you in the exam, but about six minutes should be enough time to get this done. All right, how did you get on? If you need longer, just pause the video again. If not, we'll have a look at some example answers. So there's lots of details that you could have followed up. Here are just two suggestions. You might have chosen something different. The fact that he's holding a microscope and the fact that the snake says tuberculosis on the side of it. Some questions you'd ask. How did Koch make his discoveries? Did anyone else find a cure or a vaccine? Is TB the only disease that he investigated? Sources that you could use might be medical journeys, journals, Koch's published works and government reports. You might even choose something like a medicine textbook. And how might these answer the question? Well, they could tell you what factors made Koch's work important. Might also tell you if anyone else made a greater discovery or cured more diseases. Now, before we move on, I'll point out that these questions can often trip students up. It's actually not important to know whether or not you could get the information from those sources. It's more you working out and demonstrating that as a historian, you know those are the sorts of sources where you might find the details. You can even ask a question that you actually know the answer to. It really doesn't matter. Make any improvements that you want to to your work and pause the video if you're going to do that. If not, let's move on. Part two, the search for magic bullets. Our aim here is to explain the later consequences of Pasteur and Koch. Here's our first task. Using information contained within this lesson, you're going to fill in a detailed mind map. You'll be able to use this information for revision and to answer an exam question. So make it accurate and detailed. You can add basic illustrations to make the information more memorable if you want to. Here's an example of how it might look. Your main heading in the middle should be the search for magic bullets. And then you can do some very nice colorful branches around the outside. Colour coding different factors makes it easier to remember. Also, the wavy lines gives you a bit more freedom as to how you organise it, and it's just a bit more natural. It looks pretty good as well. The subheadings that we're going to have a look at are as follows, so you can add these to your mind map when you're ready. Paul Ehrlich, Sahajiro Hatta, Gerhard Domag, Sulfonamides, and what are magic bullets? OK, you can pause the video here and create the template for your mind map now. Let's have a look at our first factor. What are magic bullets? Pasteur found that germs cause disease. Pasteur and Koch then found vaccines to prevent killer diseases like rabies and anthrax. We should already know this. However, usually there was still no way of killing a disease after you caught it, without killing the patient too. A chemical that would kill a germ, but not the patient, was known as a magic bullet. Think of a bullet flying through the air. Once it's flying off, that's pretty much it. It either hits its target or it doesn't. But the idea of a magic bullet is that it could seek out and kill the disease without harming anything or anyone else. Your task then. Explain what a magic bullet was in your own words. Add these definitions to your diagram and your mind map, and maybe add some illustrations as well to make it more memorable. Pause the video while you do this. All right, on to our next section. Paul Ehrlich, he's another one of our important individuals. There he is. Paul Ehrlich was a doctor from Germany, just like Robert Koch was. He was born in 1854. In 1889, he joined Koch's research team. He examined diphtheria in particular. He saw how antibodies, such as white blood cells, worked in attacking the disease. Now this was important. Pasteur had worked out that the body had some way of fighting infection, but didn't actually know what this way was. Paul Ehrlich's work with um, antibodies allowed him to do this, and also to understand better how vaccines actually operated. He wanted to find a chemical which helped the antibodies by attacking particular germs, a so-called magic bullet. Add these details to your mind map now. Again, you can add a small illustration if you like. And remember, if there's anything linked to any other sections, you can start to add in those links as well. I often use a dashed line for this. Pause the video while you note these things down. Okay, let's have a look at our next section. 
Sahachiro Hatta. There he is, walking, working with Paul Ehrlich in the laboratory. Hatta was a new scientist, and he had joined uh, Paul Ehrlich's team. He retested several mixtures that Ehrlich had been testing to try and find this so-called magic bullet. He found that number 606, well, actually it's more the sixth one that he tried in the sixth group of, uh, of chemicals, killed some syphilis bacteria, which was a very unpleasant sexually transmitted disease. The new medicine was tested repeatedly by Ehrlich and was found to actually work in attacking the syphilis bacteria, but not other things. This was then referred to as Salvason 606. There was now a cure for syphilis, but it could very easily hurt the patient too, so it wasn't hugely popular. Pause the video here and let's explain Sahachiro Hatta's contribution to the magic bullet story. In particular, you'll need to make sure you note down what he did, but also details of what Salvason 606 was. So pause the video now. Our next section, Gerhard Domak. He was another German who was inspired by Ehrlich. In 1932, so time is really moving on now, he discovered Prontazil, a sulfonamide antibiotic medicine. In mice, this killed the germ that caused blood poisoning, but didn't actually harm the mice. He was able to test this on his daughter who became ill from an infected needle in 1935. Necessity being the mother of invention here, he took the risk and actually performed the medical trial on his own daughter. I suppose that is born out of desperation. Would it work or would it harm her? I'm happy to say it worked and she recovered. Therefore, Gerhard Domak had not only developed and discovered Prontazil, a sulfonamide antibiotic medicine, which means it, it attacks germs, he had proved that it worked. Good for you, Gerhard, Gerhard Domak. Pause the video now and add some notes to your mind map. Again, make any links that you need to. Let's have a wider look at sulfonamides. Here we see a wound being treated with a sulfonamide powder. This is taken from a medical training manual from the Second World War. The chemical that worked in Prontazil was a sulfonamide, and therefore it's based upon the chemical element sulfur. They killed lots of germs, so other sulfonamides were also developed. However, they weren't perfect. High doses of sulfonamides could cause liver damage, and they were totally ineffective against particularly strong diseases. Nevertheless, this is far more effective than what people had before, which was basically nothing. So this is a good example of progress. They were widely used in the Second World War, for example, to fight and prevent infection in wounded soldiers, something that they would have absolutely been begging for in the First World War. Pause the video now, make your notes on your mind map, and again, make some links. For example, Gerhard Dermak is probably our pioneering uh, significant individual when it comes to sulfonamides. All right, let's put it together, finally. Here we've got our significant individuals. We've looked at in the past Jenner and Pasteur, and if you're not familiar with those work, you can, their work, you can go back and look at their lessons. We've looked at the contribution of Robert Koch, Ehrlich, Hatter and Domak. Before you say anything, I've not arranged these in any particular order, but they are broadly chronological, but they're not really arranged in terms of importance. So what I need you to do now is write down at least one achievement each of these people made in the fight against infectious disease. If that's too easy, by all means write more than one achievement. Secondly, in your view, who is most important in the history of medicine? Now, that's got to mean that they didn't just find something that was useful, but something that was accepted and something that actually had an impact on improving medicine. Explain your choice with examples. Once you've done that, that will be the end of the lesson. I'll say thank you very much for watching, and I hope it's been useful to you, even though this has only really been a brief look at this quite wide topic. So by all means, do some deeper research of your own as well. But if it has been useful, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel for more Medicine Through Time content, and I'll say thank you very much. Goodbye.